Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to basically solve as a problem, but it's more of a theoretical kind of a problem, um, related to uh, statistics and in particular uh, statistical um, evaluation of the uh, covariance and correlation between random variables. Now, um, the beginning of this story I actually shared with you in my lecture on uh, theory of probabilities, uh, also related to correlation, and the beginning is actually statistical, which led me to some probabilistic um, aspects of, of this. So, um, I was thinking about very simple thing. If two random variables are independent, then their covariance and correlation are equal to zero. So if you have two random variables, now their covariance is defined as average of their product minus product of their averages. And we know that for random variables which are independent of each other, the um, average, the mathematical expectation of their uh, product is equal to the product of their expectations and that's why it's equal to zero. So for independent random variables um, covariance and correlation, which is covariance divided by product of their standard deviations, um, is zero. I was thinking about whether reverse is true. I mean, I know reverse is not true. I just wanted to make an example. How can I prove that reverse is not true? Which means if covariance is equal to zero, then um, my uh, random variables might not be independent. So, basically I need an example. Um, example of uh, two random variables which are um, which have which, which have zero covariance but dependent on each other. Just one example would prove that from the covariance equal to zero doesn't follow independence. All right, so I decided to make such an example in a very simple case. When I have two random variables, um, each having two separate values with certain probabilities. And I couldn't really make an example. I mean, every time I was trying to do this type, um, I came to either they are independent or one of them is a constant. So I was just thinking about this and converted this into basically a theorem, which I have proven, and that was part of my probability lecture um, on, uh, on random variables. Uh, I think it's probability problem number seven in random variables um, chapter of probabilities. So, okay, with two random variables taking only two values each, we cannot actually make an example um, of uh, random variables which are uncorrelated but still dependent on each other. So I've decided to go a little bit further. So I decided to make two variables. One of them takes two values and another takes three values. And then I really came up with this particular example which I'm going to present right now. Um, this is related to um, basically, okay, the problem is make an example of two, real, uh, two random variables which are dependent on each other but their covariance and correlation equal to zero. And that's what I'm about to basically demonstrate right now as part of this lecture actually. And um, I do suggest you to, to try to to do it yourself first. Uh, I'm just giving a hint that uh, in my case I took one variable which takes two, var two, two values and another takes three values and then I found which values and which probabilities to <coughs> on one end they are dependent, on the other end they have zero covariance. Try to do it yourself. The problem is presented on unizor.com. This is the problem number two uh, yeah, problem number two uh, in statistical correlation. 
and I here am about to present my version of this uh, an example which I came up with so here is my example I have two random variables um, I call it S and T actually um, now the T random variable takes values um, so it's A and B for S and C D and X for variable T I'll explain why I used the letter X here so A B C D X so this random variable takes these values and ver random variable t takes these values now I made 100 experiments and as a result what I have found was the following s was equal to a and s was equal to b in 50 cases out of a hundred okay now among these 50 cases when my s equals to a t always was equal to d so all 50 cases were here and this is zero however if my random variable s took uh, value b then my values have been distributed among this and zero here now first of all is it possible yes are these random variable dependent well absolutely because just think about it so whenever s is equal to a t is always equal to d that's a clear dependency right and whenever it's equal to b s is equal to b t does not equal to d and distributes its value so it's definitely a dependency now how can i prove that there is a dependency in a really mathematical uh, sense well, very easily. You remember that if two events are independent, then the probability of simultaneous occurrence is equal to prob uh, product of their probabilities, right? Or, which is exactly the same thing, the conditional probability of one event under condition another occurred is equal to unconditional probability. That's what basically independence is. Well, let's just check this. So here is one event, for instance. Um, S is equal to A and T is equal to C. Now, the probability of this is zero, as we see, right? But the probability of this times this, let's just think about it. T is equal to C in 25 cases, T is equal to D in 50 cases, and T is equal to X in 25. So out of 100, probability of this of t is equal to c is 25 hundredths, which is one quarter, and this is 50 uh, uh, hundredths, so it's one half. Obviously, the product of these does not equal to zero. And in some other cases, I have exactly the same situation. But, but actually, almost like all the cases. So it's definitely not this. We don't have this, which means we don't have independence. Okay, so that's number one. Now, how about their covariance? Well, let's just calculate. Very easy. This is what we are going to calculate, right? So, let's go with um, mathematical expectation or average in, in case we have statistical uh, distribution of these two random variables. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different values of mutual uh, taking certain values, mutual distribution. So, values A times C, the probability is zero, right? Plus, values A times D, 
probability is 50 over 100. I'll put 100 at the very end. And probability of AX is 0 plus. Probability BC it's 25. BD 0 and BX 25. And I have to divide it all by 100 experiments. That's the average of my values, which is the best estimate of their um, mathematical expectation as possible, which is equal to, let's just think, now this goes out, this goes out, this goes out, they're all zeros. So I have, uh, this is one half, one half AD, this is one quarter BC, and one quarter BX. Okay. That's my average of their product. Let me write it down here. So it's uh, expectation of S times T is equal to uh, AD over 2 plus BC over 4 plus BX over 4. Okay. Now, what is expectation of random variable S? Well, we know that it takes two values, A and B, each occurred in 50 out of 100 cases. So this is equal to A times 50 over 100, which is 2, plus B over 2, or A plus B over 2. Now, what is expectation of random variable T? Well, it has three different values, and these are probabilities, right? I'm summarizing. So that's... Uh, C divided by 4 plus D divided by 2, 50 over 100, and X divided by uh, 4. And now, if I multiply them, let me see what I have. Well, um, it's uh, AC divided by 8 plus, I don't really need this one, plus AD divided by 4 plus AX divided by 8 plus BC divided by 8 plus BD divided by 4 and plus BX divided by 8. Now, here is what I would, what, what I would like to do. A, B, C, and D are some constants and I will find X such that this is equal to this. And if I will be able to do this, my covariance will be equal to zero, which is this minus this, right? Now, I can actually just put an equation, this equals to this, and consider A, B, C, and D are constant, I'll just find x. I'll do even better than that. I'll just put concrete values in A, B, C, and D, so I don't have to worry about um, le letters, I will use real numbers, which I just came up completely from the blue. And, you know, it's still a linear equation, so I will be able to, to solve it. So, what kind of values of A, B, C, and G I will take? I will take the values which are easy to calculate. So, you see these divided by 8, etc. So, I will take the following. A is equal to 2, B is equal to 4, C is equal to... Mm, 8 
and d is equal to 60. I just came up with these numbers for one purpose only. So these divisions will not have um, anything in denominator. It will just cross out. So I don't need this. And let me see what kind of equation I will have. On the left I will have AD over 8. It's 8, I mean over 2. Uh, so it's uh, 4, right? BC over 4. BC over 4. It's 8. And BX over and bx over 4 bx over 4 so it's just x okay uh, now how about this expression ac over 8 is AC over 8 it's 2 AD over 4 AD over 4 that's 8 AX over 8 it's X divided by 4 BC divided by 8 is 4 BD divided by 4, BD divided by 16, and BX divided by its X over 2. Something like this, right? And they are equal to each other. And as you see, this is just a plain linear equation which I can solve. So this is what, 12 plus x equals 10 and 20, 30 plus uh, 3 quarters over 4, something like this, right? Which means x divided by 4 is equal to 18 is and x is equal to what 72 or something like this anyway there is a solution now there is a solution which means that with these numbers i have created a random variable which actually two random variables one of them taking values two and four with probabilities 15 50 percent and another taking values uh, 8, 16, and uh, 72. And uh, the result is that they are definitely dependent on each other based on these probabilities which I put, or statistical frequency, doesn't really matter. So uh, covariance is equal to zero, but they are definitely dependent on each other. So the moral of this story is that from covariance equal to zero does not follow uh, independence of random variables. Okay. Um, there are certain things which I think you should really be very, very careful about when you're using um, covariance or correlation coefficient to basically make some kind of a judgment about relationship between random variables. If it is close to zero or almost zero in statistical calculations, it does not mean that uh, these two variables are independent. They might be dependent and in this, in, as in this particular case. Um, at the same time, if the correlation is significantly non-zero, like closer to one, for instance, then you probably should suspect um, certain level of dependency. But even in that case, dependency is not the same as causation, and maybe there is some kind of a um, 
outside reason for these two variables to be dependent on each other because really they are dependent on some other thing which you don't really know about and have no control about. So that's why I would like to be very very careful as far as recommendations to use these uh, uh, correlation coefficient. And another thing which is also very important, correlation is really a good measure when you have two random variables which are both kind of in a linear or almost linear dependency uh, uh, of each other. So if one goes up, another goes up approximately by the same, let's say, percentage or something like this. If that is not the case, if you have one is straight line and another is some kind of a curve, then you should not really depend on correlation and you should not really make um, really important judgment based on whatever the correlation number you, um, you are investigating and you're getting actually as a result of statistical calculations. So basically that's it. Just, you know, the word of, ca the word of caution um, whenever you're using this. Um, now, unfortunately, in many uh, scientific researches, um, this really word of caution is not really, you know, was not really listened well by, by the authors of these researches. And they make all kinds of um, results, published results, which are based on some correlation uh, coefficient, which are really non-reliable. And that includes actually medical researches as well. It's very difficult to make a really reliable statistical results. So that's why people sometimes make shortcuts, etc. All right, so I cautioned you. I do recommend you to read again the uh, notes for this particular lecture. Other than that, that's it, and good luck.